how do you feel about the whole gang affiliation thing? I think the gang stuff is incredibly um, unfortunate. That's what I would say. It's unfortunate. Uh, being somebody who really is, you know, from that life and, and know what that's about, I would never promote that. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you are the Michael Jackson of this time, you can't bring yourself down to a level, to people at that level, unless it's there to bring them up. Banging and doing that is, banging is, is, is not a, um, banging is a full-time thing. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't realize. And that's why I was like, I could never call myself a gangbanger. I have a college degree. I went to college. I'm not frontlining. I'm not putting in work. I'm not going to shoot nobody for the homies. I'll kill for my family. Right. But that's not a gang to me. That's just protecting your own. I think um, with Chris Brown, I know what he needs. He needs a brotherhood. He should join Omega Sci Fi like I did. Or, you know, something like that. I could set that up, you know. But it's important, like, for a young black man, we, we just be wanting to be a part of something, whether it's a football team, basketball team, or a gang. You know, and some people just choose the wrong one because they want to look tough or they feel like it makes them get this type of uh, allure to it. I interviewed Big Trey D. Mm -hmm. Not too long ago. You're familiar I with know who he is? Yeah. Okay, you know him personally? Yeah. I don't know him personally. Okay. But he's from Long Beach, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, insane crib. Right. You know, put in a lot of work. Right. Done a lot of jail a real time. One. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I interviewed him and I asked him how he felt about the whole Chris Brown, you know, mm -hmm. gang affiliation. I see it as like the peer pressure aspect is that, you know, is this what you really want for yourself or do you feel that this is the only way you'll be secure in certain areas? So are you buying into it for protection or that's the only that's the only logical conclusion that I can come to because I mean I can't see somebody waking up one day and like, you know, okay, the Bentley's in the driveway, you know, um a couple of mil in the bank, uh well, let me go to the hood and get shot at. What did you think about that? I thought what Trey D said, he per eloquently put, like, I couldn't have said it better. You know, it's just unfortunate you live in this lifestyle to put in this position to bring a lot of people up, and you don't want to accept your responsibility as that role model. I know it's tough. It's tough shoes to feel. Like, my biggest fear is being, I said, God, whatever you do, don't make me have to be a preacher. That's <laughs> probably what I'm going to have to do, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He probably don't want to be that light, but he, he, he don't got a choice. And then I think that's one of the reasons I kind of started falling back out of the camp and stuff, because I don't deal with gangs and all that type of stuff. Um, I don't like that type of attention around my family or around me. I don't give it. I don't give it light. And another thing I want to talk about, extortion. It's a lot of niggas out here claiming this and that. They getting extorted like a motherfucker. You ain't right. extorting me. Right. Ain't nobody ever going to extort me. I got something for it. So, you know, that's a lot. You got to look at that, too, with a lot of these artists. They rolling around with gangsters and stuff, but they being extorted. I want somebody to try to extort me. Like, yeah, I mean, the, the, that affiliation isn't free. Exactly. Right. And also, when, when you choose to They end deserve it, in my opinion. I laugh. I be laughing at people coming to L.A. and think it's, okay, you gangbang out there and you a blood and crip and you're not even from L.A., then... You know, some people don't like that, and they, they start tripping. They come over here, and they they look at you like you're successful, and you want to claim this lifestyle that came from L.A., and you want to come to L.A. and not give back what we're going to take. And that's what a lot of the homies do. You've seen the graffiti, Chris put Pyru and stuff. You know, I've heard throwing up gang signs. You know, there's videos of him throwing up gang signs in clubs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, it's interesting to me. Do you have any idea how he got into that? Yeah, it's just because, you know, a lot of the people he knows from Compton, people are close to him, and they're not even that way either, but their cousins may be just like me, you know. I have cousins who super fly cripping and super with that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm me. I'm the educated football guy who go to college, and I don't have to act like them. I am that, just naturally. I know you don't have to act that way when you're really that, that way. Um, so a lot of people around him in L.A., he loves L.A. He's just a fan of L.A., just like Tupac was. Tupac ain't from L.A., Right. That man is from the East Coast in Oakland. Right. <laughs> you know, Chris Brown is like pop. You know, people got to realize that. Yeah, and, and if you really think about it, um, you know, it's not it's not documented one way or another, but there, there is a strong theory that, that Pac was killed gangbanging because if you look at what happened right yeah. before the shooting, right. 
it was it was a set tripping kind of situation where you know someone allegedly stole a chain and mm -hmm. a crip and blah blah like and that's why it's important not to get into this type of lifestyle when there's no re like what is why are you getting into low level crime why would you get why would you not want to go enroll in college and just you know do something like that instead you know you want to have guns and, and and have this allure to look harder and i think it's just a cover-up for something else you know maybe you're trying to cover up something that ain't so hard inside and that's okay too